Um, thank you, everybody, for you know joining us. Uh, my name is Enrique Martinez, the Novation Technology Evangelist. Crazy name, you could just call me the synth guy for the U.S. And um, yeah, we're here to talk about the Circuit Mono Station, kind of what it is, what it can do, uh, creative ways of using it, and basically a bunch of its features, as well as the new update, the 1.2, which adds a lot of functionality to the synthesizer itself. Uh, are majority of you guys anybody familiar with Circuit or Circuit Mono Station at all? No, just a little bit here and there. Cool. All right, perfect. So, what the um, the Circuit Mono Station is? It's a paraphonic analog synthesizer. So, Mono Station, you can go ahead and already ignore that. Um, and what a paraphonic synth is is basically it allows you to play two notes utilizing two oscillators, but they share the same signal paths. So. You know, if your amplifier is in the middle of its cycle and you play a second note, it's not going to have its own attack. It's just going to be loud wherever the uh, amp envelope cycle is. But what makes Circuit Mono Station so cool is that you have two separate sequencers that allow you to sequence the second oscillator independently from the first, but still sharing the same signal path. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple notes. The way it works, if I press play, you can see the white square right here is basically the playhead in a 16 step sequence. You got your sequencer down below and your notes across the top. I can say, oh, I like this note. I can put it down different spots in the sequence and it'll just play it. Or I can just hit record. Here is again if I turn up the second oscillator, I can then go to the second oscillator here, and you can see that the sequence is now blank. So if I press the note, oh, I have it on a bypass. So then I can maybe say I want to tie in uh, two bars, right? In the pattern section, you have 16 different patterns or 16 bars for oscillator one, eight for oscillator two, and then eight for the mod sequencer, which we'll get to in a second. So I got these two bars tied together and a single bar for oscillator one. I'm gonna go back to note mode, hit record, and then just play something in. You need to go and transpose that. You got some cool functions, like you can have oscillator two bypass the filter, while oscillator one's still going through. Or, if you do some weirder stuff, like let's go to another blank 16 step sequence, I can say here, I wanna play this note, there, there, and there. I can then go to pattern settings, and in the pattern settings, I can do a bunch of different things. I can change the rate at which it's synced to the clock. I can change its play direction, forward, backwards, ping pong, or random. And I can even change the start point and the end point of the sequence. So right now we have, I can just say end here. Or maybe I want it to do six. All the while, oscillator one is still in its 16 step sequence. Again, focusing on patterns, I can say duplicate this pattern to here, and then I can go here, go to edit it. I can then just hit shift and mutate, which will then take the notes that I've entered and rearrange them. Maybe now I can just tie those two patterns together. Maybe set one to random. But the crazy thing here is like, it's really quick at writing patterns and doing a bunch of different things. And the cool thing is oscillator one sends out on MIDI channel one, oscillator two is on MIDI channel two. And the mod sequencer um, is basically dependent on uh, what it's doing. So you can have it do basically just CV values out. And to do that, I can say shift in sessions. And I can choose what the CV and gate uh, outputs are listening to. So I can have it mirror oscillator one, mirror oscillator two, or just be its own independent sequence as opposed to listening to the other. So what this now does is if I go to note mode and mod sequencer, turn this, up. this is now what we're listening to is my modulator. And 
because everything's in key and in scale, as long as you have your oscillators in tune, in this case I'm using the Basimilis Veritas Alter, which is just out of frame, uh, you can then play some stuff in for modular on top of this. So we have this going. Pattern settings apply to this too. I can then go ahead and say maybe end here, be random at 30 seconds. So it's great. Or turn down oscillator too. So basically what the mono station is, is a, it's a really crazy sequencer, internally and both externally, because again, all this stuff can be used to control a VST over USB or using 5-pin MIDI to control another synthesizer, maybe an OCOS because you have the CV and gate. You also have an auxiliary CV out of the back too, which is a destination in the mod matrix. You got four sources, your envelope, your LFO, your velocity, as well as the sequencer itself. And the way the sequencer works is basically in the mod sequence, you use the velocity values on specific steps to send out a basically a CV value to any of the destinations within the mod matrix. So it's almost like a fourth um, sequencer, but I'm gonna restrict myself from saying that even though I just said it. Um, but, so with all that aside, you can do a bunch of crazy things like that. There's even um, audio input as well, which you can run an uh, external thing. So I have this little um, drum loop kind of just chilling here. Let's see what this sounds like. Da, da, da. I press play on the mono station. I have basically five pin out into here. And let me turn down the modular. This is circular. This is how the drum loop sounds now, just by itself, not going through mono station. Cool, so I'm gonna unplug it. And then run it straight into the mono station. And then turn this up. So what it's doing is, again, relying on the signal path of oscillator one to open up the amp envelope in order to hear the sound. So why that's cool is because mono station is clocking circuit, and circuit's playing a drum loop at the same tempo as the mono station, I can then sync, for example, the LFO to tempo and have that be moving the filter of the drum loop. a little bit more modest and actually turn down the gain of the actual input and just have it be a little bit more of a cleaner sound. Maybe give it a little distortion. And the cool thing here is if we go and do pattern settings, I'm going to just set it to four steps. Take down the amp envelope and reshape kind of the drum sounds itself. Or you can do weird stuff like take a couple steps out and create almost a new rhythm. Or set that to random. And maybe send the envelope to the filter, up back in the drums. Really good audio destroyer. I I like. Uh, yeah, it's really. Good. I was. I'll yeah. the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's cool because basically it'll sync to whatever. Even if you had this plugged into like Ableton or a DAW or USB, you press play on your computer, mono station starts going. You send audio out of that into the mono station to give it a little bit more warmth because it's an all analog signal path. Back into your DAW, maybe change the way the shape is a little bit and you're good to go. And then on top of that, you still got a synthesizer in there that you can then mess around with. Or the mod sequencer, which you can use to control a semi-modular synth or a Eurorack synthesizer, whatever it may be. The power of the mono station's pretty crazy. It's kind of like a Swiss army knife, similar to circuit, where you can kind of always find some sort of a realm for it, um, depending on what your setup currently is. The other cool thing is, 
If I go back to the other session that we were messing around with, which is this one right here, and go ahead and take the circuit back into the mixer itself, and press play here. Right. I'm gonna just go ahead and hit record. So the cool thing with MonoStation is everything is automatable. You can just hit record and record the automation on everything. So if we make this super plucky, let's go ahead and add a bunch of steps. Whatever these notes are, we're all in scale, so it doesn't really matter. It should sound good. So I can just hit record and record the decay time. So check this. Then you can see with the LED feedback, it shows you what I just recorded. Then I want to record the filter. Maybe I want to record how much the envelope is affecting the filter cutoff, just the depth of the amount of matrix. You can do that. So now if I turn the filter down, I'm kind of hear it jumping. The other crazy thing is, not only can you record basically anything on here, you can even record the audio input, the noise level, the to fine tune, the coarse tune of what the uh, oscillators are. You can even record the automation of you selecting patches per step. So on mine, I have a couple of patches here, just like a kick drum, snare, hat, and open hat. Uh, again, all analog. So if I press play, I've now selected that patch, but I can go back to this patch. And I can just hit record and record. So now it's playing that rhythm, but with different patches per step. And the cool thing is, if I hold down shift within the patch menu, it'll hold down the note values and then record just the patch change, but keep all the actual sequence there itself. So like, to demonstrate this a little better is if I were to go and say, uh, uh, let's just record myself a little kick. I'll say here, da 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 da. Right, easy. Go to patches. The reason I hit the kick again is just to lock that into the sequence. So then I can say, and then maybe a little up pat. But then if I were to go and play some notes, like let's just say this, right? I can see that this is that step. I can duplicate that within the within all the other blank spaces. And then I can go and edit what note that's actually playing. Again, report to my it's just like a weird way to kind of come up with these super random rhythms and whatnot. It's just, uh, that's part of the 1.2 update was the ability to record your different patches per step. And then if you want to go and say, oh, this kick, I want to change the uh, pitch of it. But for all of them, you just go to there, you see what patch it's on, you just hit save and save again. It'll now save that patch to a different setting. But of course, we have the recorded automation of the filter on top of all of that. Um, within that, I mean, there's there's a lot. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I've missed. I mean, the mod sequencer is pretty crazy with the modular setup. Like, I think with Monostation coming out after Circuit, a lot of people were left wondering why there's no samples and why there's not two synthesizers and why it's a little bit more expensive than Circuit itself. But when you compare the two, it, they really go hand in hand together really well. Um, circuit can handle a lot of your sample capabilities because it's digital, you can put your own samples in it, your own drum tracks, and you've got two digital synths based off the mini Nova, the Nova synth engine. Um, six notes of polyphony each, especially for sequencing, it's really powerful. But then if you have the mono station doing something like super solid or super simple, um, it's a really good combination, especially with anything else. Like I used to use the base station a lot, and this is easily replaced that because in a live situation, that would take up a sequencer track on whatever I was using, and it'd be another page that I would have to jump to to then edit, where this, it has its own sequencer. I could just let this run in time with everything and have it do its own thing. It's in scale, everything, it's, it's good to go. 
Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and put this to practice. I'm gonna go here and here. Let's see what this is. So this is a bass patch I always use. Just kind of sharp, straight to the point. Let's go ahead and uh, throw a little kick drum in here. And turn that up, of course. Here, I'll set this up a little bit. Cool. So same with the whole uh, sample or a patch per step, you can do the same thing, basically selecting different samples per step on the uh, circuit, so I can go. Oh, two bars. Now I can tune that down. And then I can just say, solid bass lines or solid lead lines. And sure, you can get really weird with a lot of the like separate sequencing of the separate oscillator doing its own thing. Like in this track here, you could possibly go and do something like that. But you'll find like a lot of really good sweet spots on the circuit mono station that's really fun to use. And then just the fact that it's kind of like doing its own thing and you don't really have to worry about it is another great feature to have. Another cool thing, um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with like ring modulators or whatnot. There's one on here too, which is really cool. Again, because you can sequence the two oscillators independently from one another, you can come up with a lot of weird sounds. Me personally, I'll run this into like a dig attack or an MPC and I'll find like the sweet spot between two sounds. So let's go ahead and like try to find one now. So this is the ring mod. I can say oscillator two. You'll see that these LEDs turn green, uh, showing that I'm now editing oscillator two. So if I hit these two together, I got purple up top and green across the bottom. That means I'm playing the notes for the oscillator two, as well as the notes for oscillator one on the same page, basically. So I can say. So this is creating the ring between the two, so I can go up an octave. Or I can just go ahead and fiddle around with the oscillator tuning itself.
just something simple, solid like that, it really gets the job done. But I mean, as far as those functions with the ability to sequence other stuff, it even has a clock input, clock output for uh, actual so uh, actual sync. So if you're running something like a pocket operator and have had issues trying to sync that to Ableton or something, MIDI into here, clock out to that, you're set to go, run the audio into here, and just kind of mangle it up a bit. Everything's in sync. CV out, gate out, auxiliary CV out. Again, the auxiliary CV is basically a destination of the mod matrix, which you can send any of the four sources to it independently from one another, positive or negative. So you don't have to choose one or the other. You can say, I want the envelope positive, the LFO negative, the sequencer, just the hair, and no velocity. And they all three of those affect the output of the auxiliary CV, which you then just send to whatever you want. Um, again, MIDI out, MIDI in, audio out, audio in. You've got the headphone out in the front. It's not battery powered like the circuit, just because it takes a lot more juice to run all this stuff, especially with the pre-filter distortion and the post-filter distortion. And uh, the sequencer itself, which is a crazy main brain. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Oh, I guess this is worth mentioning. Another cool feature on uh, that we've added in the update is the ability to un uncouple the LFOs re-triggering from the... Uh, Basically, every time you press the key, it would restart the cycle of the LFO, so you couldn't do really long LFOs without hitting another note. So we've added that. And then what's the second shift, Taylor? Do you know? That, I always forget what it is. Yeah, I can't remember what it is. But it must have not been that important. <laughs> I don't remember, because everything else I remember. The other cool thing too is like the, um, the clock output, it's not just stuff to 16, so you can actually change the rate at which it's basically divided or multiplied from the original clock point. Um, receives program changes, sends program changes. I mean, it does a bunch of stuff. Or is there... Envelope trigger. Envelope, envelope trigger. The guy ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. So the notes will slide into one another or not. And that also comes with the, um, the glide feature, which I completely forgot to mention. Basically, glide, similar to Portamento, you can set it per step. So I can say for this step, I want it to slide that long. From left to right, it's basically um, like a certain amount of milliseconds up to, I think, about a second or two of how long the slide will take to reach the next note. But that's just for that step. I can then go here and turn slide off, then maybe here make it a quicker slide. So you can have different slides per part. And even with the mod sequencer, where each velocity, here, I'll just show you guys, it's way easier than just talking nonstop. So here, I'll play in all notes. Oh, actually, yeah, you know, I'll do that. Cool. Filters down. I can say mod sequencer, velocity, full on the first step, Maybe low on the fifth step, ninth step, and eh, eh, there. So I can say sequencer, go to the filter. So now those values are being sent to the filter. Easy. But I have shift and mod sequence. It says smooth. I'm not sure if you can see it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Smooth. And that's basically going to smooth those values out. You know, so it's almost like an LFO designer. You can make it kind of more step and hold, or sample and hold style, or you can kind of smooth it out and kind of create these weird, forever moving almost LFOs within it. And then of course that also applies to like we set it to random. It's now smoothing out between these random cho chosen uh, values that you've set in there. But uh, I'd say that's pretty much about. It for the most part. Let's go ahead and open up the floor to questions. Does anybody have any questions about the monostation? Yeah. This is always my question with any sim. How do you set back to like a hit? Ah, easy. So in patches, if I hit patches here, we have this page of 32. You can see that the octaves kind of lit up. You have 64 patches you can save. Say this one. That's garbage. I just want to hit clear, boom, and now it's a blank empty patch. Yeah. And then on top of that, all these patches, you plug it in and you go on to components, novationcomponents.com. You can back up your entire mono station, that's sessions, the songs, um, all your patches, and then you can share those or just like download them itself or like say you got a show in Australia or something, 
don't take yours out, borrow one over there and download your mono station down onto whatever one you're borrowing at that time. Or say like yours breaks or you lose it or spill um, Diet Pepsi on it or something and it's toasted, you still have all your stuff backed up. Can you put it on a zip too? Yeah, so basically you can, you'll save it to the cloud. The reason we have it on the, on the web MIDI is basically so you don't have to keep taking up space and files on your computer, but you can always download it as a SysX file. Yeah, and that's independent. So you can be like, I want to download everything, or I just want to download my patches, or maybe I made all these patches, but I want to download new sessions, or uh, basically like the sessions and patterns, but keep the patches the same. You can do it kind of like a modular in a way where you can choose what you want. Any other question? Does the sub oscillator fixed wave? Is it just a yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a triangle. triangle. Yeah, pretty sure it's a triangle. Yeah. And then, yeah, you have pre filter distortion, post filter distortion, so two separate distortion circuits, um, three different distortion types as well for um, the post filter. The pre filter ones, always the same. You got band pass, low pass, high pass, um, your slope 12 dB or 24 dB. And then the bypass, which basically lets either the noise bypass the filter, oscillator two bypass the filter, or both, or not. <clears throat> yeah, tempo, swing, you can see it here, it's kind of Tetris style, 134, uh, 108, 89. We have a screen, so it's the best we could do. And then uh, if you hold down shift and move that, you're not changing your swing. So you can go up to 80, or I think it's 20, which is like negative swing, which Nobody should use it. Sounds crazy. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> to prove it. <laughs> Here, I'll try it. Whoa. I just heard that match. So then you swing it. A. Here, let's give us some reference. Alright, and I'll go negative. sessions on here and in each session it has all the patterns all your um, patches as well so say you uh, choose this patch which right now sounds terrible but if I were to save this to the session that patch is now saved within that session so if we go to another one and choose that same patch it's going to be what it was originally but if we go back to that session it'll be the way we last left it which is also another cool way because say you do make that and for whatever reason you really like that sound, you can go into components and say, save this patch to my computer, and then you can then upload that patch to all the rest of them. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. How does mutate work? So what mutate does is basically it's gonna take the pattern that you've created, for example, this. I gotta fix this. So, in patterns, what I like to do is I'll duplicate this. Let's say this pattern's really cool. I can say duplicate from here, and paste it there, there, and there. I'll go to this one. And it's gonna take all the notes that I've entered in right now and then just rearrange them. It's not gonna add new ones. It's not gonna take them out of key or anything like that. So it's kind of like a fail safe. It'll always kind of keep you where you need to be. And then you just go to pattern, say you play from one to four. So the mutate's really fun. Like if you have an idea like this is cool, but it could be a little different, just copy the pattern, duplicate it, and then again you got 16 bars which you can tie all of them to to create really, really long patterns, which is also another cool thing too. Is the mod station married to the circuit, or how does it play with other uh, modulation? 
boxes? Without the Novation boxes, it's good. I mean, again, it's like pretty much all standalone. It's all analog up across the top with circuit sequencer attached to the bottom, except monophonic versus the six notes of polyphony each that you get. Um, but yeah, it's always waiting to receive clock, so always sending clock. It can send uh, notes. It can also, you can turn that off, receive notes, send notes. Again, oscillator one's MIDI channel one, oscillator two's MIDI channel two. The mod sequence is, um, depending on what you set it to, could be the CD and gate, or it could even send out of, uh, I think by default it sends uh, MIDI channel two, because I was playing since two earlier with this. And um, that also all works over USB as well. So if you plug this in and are running reactor or something like that, you want a more hands-on feel to sequencing a plugin, you can do this. And at the same time, it's receiving clock from your DAW. So if you press play in your DAW, this will start moving in time, and then you can kind of get a better hands-on feel and start mutating that pattern and changing up silent or whatever it may be. Yeah. From what you were, I blanked out for a second. Did, are the knobs also CC? Uh, they send out CC. I want to say they do, but um, and they probably also receive CC as well, like to record automation and stuff within within Ableton. I'm almost. 99% sure that they do, and uh, but they can't be changed because I know the circuit ones do as well, and they can't be changed either. <clears throat> so that audio input. So is that just like a pass through for some uh, already created tracks, or is it sending it through and you're able to, to deconstruct what you're sending through? So yeah. So in the, in the demonstration that I did, I sent just some drum, like a simple drum track. You can even say that like I was running. YouTube playing a song into mono stations. So then what it does is it sends it through the signal path, which is the envelope, the pre-filter distortion, the filter, and the post-filter distortion, as well as the mixer. And the mixer has a separate gain, so you can really start like distorting it. And the reason it has that is because you could run like a guitar through here. I ran a guitar and kind of created these weird waws using like a band pass and the LFO, which is really fun. Um, so yeah, basically it runs it in there and it runs it through the, uh, the signal path, but you can't bypass that. So you always have to make sure, like say you want to just use this as a pedal, you would always have to put a note down and have that play, but then just turn down oscillator one so you don't hear it, just so it's opening up the amp envelope or triggering the, uh, the envelope itself. Yeah. Uh, one question from YouTube. Cool. They want to know, um, can it also sample? No, so the mono station cannot sample the mono station is uh, all analog. So because of that, it cannot sample. It's just all analog up top with circuit sequencer down below. But the circuit can sequence, or sample. You basically just drag and drop samples over USB onto any of the 64 pads that you have right here. And then basically, you can go to this one here. So all of these you can then take and start manipulating. Free stuff. <laughs> Let's get on to this raffle, maybe. Awesome. Cool, guys. Thank you guys so much for uh, checking it out.